The Shure SM7B is an extremely popular microphone, it's no secret. The company itself even dubs it the microphone you've already seen before, as many YouTubers, streamers, and influencers in general use this dynamic microphone. Condensed microphones like the Neumann U87 can be extremely expensive, upwards of $3,000. And the Shure SM7B isn't cheap by any means, it runs for about $399 on Shure's website, but its sleek design and high versatility and great sound overall makes it a very popular choice amongst a lot of content creators out there. And by itself, this microphone tends to sound very warm and quite dark, seeing as it is a dynamic microphone. This tends to turn a lot of people away from the Shure SM7B and draws them in towards condenser microphones. If you're like me and you still enjoy those crisp high ends but the strong bass, the Shure SM7B can be a great choice and it all comes down to post-processing. So today I'm going to guide you in how to post-process your Shure SM7B audio or other dynamic microphone audio, even some condenser microphone audio to sound exactly like this, the best it can possibly be, something like a Neumann U87. Now I'm going to be using Logic Pro and I'm also going to be using Universal Audio and its incredible plugins. However, I'm also going to be using some free stuff and some in Logic Pro. Pro effects. The general ideas here can pretty much be replicated with a lot of different devices, but if you're willing to spend the money, here are some incredible plugins and some incredible effects that you can utilize to make your SM7B sound like this. Now the first step for me is soft tube saturation knob, and the great thing about this is that the effect is completely free. Soft tubes website make this download and install process extremely easy. All you need to do is download the soft tube central app on your Mac or Windows and download the effect with ease. And this is just the audio without the saturation knob. Right now I'm speaking into the Shure SM7B and this is without the saturation knob. This is just base audio, nothing added yet. And of course here's with the saturation knob added on my settings. And right now I'm speaking to the Shure SM7B and now I have added the saturation knob. While the changes might seem slight at first, adding more effects on top of it can start to make a huge difference. I generally keep it at the keep high preset. For me I tend to have a enthusiastic voice when I talk, but for those of people who have lower, deeper voices, you can switch it to keep low, obviously, but I, I tend to switch between the two, um, balancing out the sound. Here's what it sounds like with the keep high audio, and this is my voice at the saturation knob at a keep high setting. Here's what it sounds like with neutral, this is my voice with the saturation knob at the neutral setting. And lastly, here's what it sounds like with keep low. So that one's up to you, but I think the saturation knob um, provides some coloration and also just a baseline for the EQ and the compressor you're going to add on top of that. This is my voice with the saturation knob at the keep low setting. The next thing I do is add an expander, which actually helps widen the audio, but also remove some noise in post-processing. Now, the Shure SM7B is great for rejecting background noise, however, putting it into a preamp and also a cloud lifter like I'm doing right here can still add up noise when you're heavily boosting the volume. Now, this expander here are my settings for it. Um, this actually does make a difference for me. I'll do a little noise test for you right now. Here's what it sounds like with just absolutely bass audio, no expander. This is just general noise that the audio picks up. And of course, here's what it sounds like with the expander on, so you can see the difference that it makes. After that, I go into some channel EQ, and this is within Logic Pro, just in their effects, and I like to use the Reduce Mids preset. Now, of course, the Shure SM7B, like I said, is a very mid-strong and bass-strong microphone, and of course, you can still keep that magic, but I like to reduce it a little bit just to get those highs crisp and strong. Now the reduced mids effect by itself is just very slight, so I like to boost it a little bit in the graph. Here's what my settings look like. Here's the audio without any EQ added whatsoever except for the saturation. This is me speaking for the before, before adding any EQ. And here's with my reduced mids added. Right now I'm speaking into the Shure SM7B and all I've added is the saturation knob and of course now the reduced mids channel EQ. And to strengthen that exact idea even further, I like to use the add brightness effect on another EQ block. Here's what my settings look like. I also boosted it just a little bit to really strengthen it. Here's the audio with just reduced mids and saturation, no add brightness. This is the before for the add brightness. All I have now is the saturation knob, the expander, and the first channel EQ. This would be the reduced mids channel EQ, but this is again the before for the add brightness. And here's the audio with my add brightness preset added. Right now I'm speaking to the Shure SM7B and now I have added the add brightness EQ block again, saturation knob expander, reduce mids, and of course add brightness. And then I come in with my compressor, which I got from Universal Audio. 
Now I got this compressor for $20 on a sale. It does typically run for about 100, but it is on sale very often. In fact, they once gave it away for free. I use the Universal Audio LA-2A leveling and compressor tool. Uh, and here's what my settings look like. I think this adds a great deal of coloration, saturation, um, and an incredible compressor uh, just to make the audio sound even more crisp. Here's what it sounds like before. Right now I'm speaking to the Shure SM7B. All that I have added is the channel EQs the saturation knob, and the expander, and this is my before for the compressor. And of course, how it sounds like after. Right now I'm speaking to the Shure SM7B, and this is the after, after I added my UAD LA-2A compressor to the audio. A lot of the times when you're increasing highs quite a lot, like I am right now, the S's can become very overpowering. However, the DSer adds a slight, but not too drastic change, because making it too drastic can actually affect the audio quality. Here's the settings for my DSer. I like to keep it very little. Here's what it sounds like before the DSer. Right now, I'm speaking to the Shure SM7B, and all I have added is the saturation knob, the expander, both channel EQs, and my compressor. This is the before for the DSer 2 within Logic Pro. S, S, Steve. I don't know why Steve. And of course, here's what it sounds like after the DSer. Right now, I'm speaking to the Shure SM7B, and this is the after for the DSer. Steve, Steve, S, Steve. There you go. The last major thing I do is add a limiter. This is within Logic Pro. Um, and I think it just rounds off the audio and makes it sound more level. This is what my settings look like. You can pause the video if you need to see it. And of course, here's what it sounds like before the limiter. Right now, I'm speaking to the Shure SM7B. I have the saturation knob, the expander, both channel EQs, my compressor, and my DSer. This is before adding the limiter. And here's what it sounds like after adding the limiter. Right now, I'm speaking to the Shure SM7B, and now I've added the limiter. Hello, this is an audio test. And finally, now this one's a little more optional. This is really just up to subjective audio beliefs and likes pretty much just how it sounds to your ear. But I actually go back to the channel EQ and add just a little bit of make warmer preset. Now when you add make warmer off the bat, it's actually pretty strong, but I like to just reduce it just a little bit. Now I do this because I love the Shure SM7B's strong mids. They're a little bit overpowering for me in the beginning. Once I add all this compressor though, the highs can start to add up, and I like to get those mids just a little bit back to bring the Shure SM7B magic back to the audio. Again, here's what it sounds like without that warmer compressor. This is before adding that optional make warmer little channel EQ block. And of course, here's what it sounds like with the EQ. Right now I'm speaking to the Shure SM7B and now I have added that make warmer EQ. As you can see, I've brought back some of that deeper bassy sounds. If you can hear it, then cool. Now lastly, the Shure SM7B is infamous for being a very quiet microphone, which is why a lot of people need the cloud lifter or a fet head to activate the microphone before it goes into the preamp to really boost that volume, similar to what we were talking about with the noise problem. The other problem this makes is that it's just very quiet, so you need to boost it in post. I just like to add gain within Logic Pro. Here's how many decibels I add. And I mean, this one is just pretty, pretty self-explanatory, but here's what it sounds like without the gain. Now I'm speaking into the Shure SM7B, and as you can see, I've added everything, but it's still very quiet because I have not boosted it. This is with my Scarlet Solo at about 10 o'clock on the gain level, and also I'm using a cloud lifter. And here is what it sounds like with gain. Right now, I am speaking into the microphone, of course, with all the effects, and I have boosted it just a little, about four decibels in post. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed going through the steps to see how I post process. I usually utilize this microphone for my podcasts, the Earbud and MLWD, so check those out linked in the description, as I said before. Um, also, I do want to just do this one more time. I think it'll be helpful. Here is me speaking to the microphone with nothing. These are no the effects. Uh, none. None of the effects. You've seen me go through all of them, and again, here's it sounds like just bass as I'm going to be. Still sounds pretty good. Great microphone, but... uh. Here's what it sounds like with all the effects, a lot crisper, a lot cleaner, more publishable of a sound. And again, if you're hearing the example sounds and you think they sound better than they do right now, it's because I'm looking into a camera, uh, while for those I'm really talking into the microphone, it just looks a lot uglier on the screen. And that brings me into this last thing, a quick tip, never have your microphone this far away from you, it's not going to pick up audio. Sure, it may look better on screen, but again, this microphone is meant to be spoken close to the capsule. But again, I think it compensates. The microphone looks pretty awesome. So I think having it in frame is not the worst thing ever. But again, speak close to it. That's how you get that full sound. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe and have a great day. Peace out.